Praise God. Yeah, last week we started out of the shadows. Yeah? Started out of the shadows. And um, we looked at, um, in, what did we look at? We are not under the law. Okay. We are not under the law. Remember that? Yeah. So today we're looking at um, being together with him, being together with him. Or better still, we are one body with him. Or, or we are in his body. We are doing this in respect to out of the shadows. Remember what we said uh, last week? We started a series concerning, and this series, by God's grace, should open up our heart, our minds, open up our eyes of understanding for us to see clearly, to understand the depth of God's love for us. You know, it will, it should. This series should challenge us, should build us up to make us, it should strengthen our relationship with God more. And, and you know, uh, and I believe, I've prayed about it, I believe that is going to bless us. Look at Romans. Let's start from Romans. Amen. Or let okay, yeah, we say baptize into his body. Okay? We are baptized into his body. Now look at uh, Romans and chapter 6. Now we, we said it's very important. The New Testament, the Bible is very bold about it. If you read Ephesians, you know, uh, Romans or the epistles, the Bible is bold about it that we are not under the law. We are not under the law. You see, you don't need, it's, it's not something that you should say with, you know, being shy. You shouldn't be shy to say it. It is, it is clearly written in the scriptures that the one who is born of God is not under the law. And when I'm saying under the law, we're not under the law of Moses. We're not under the law. So we're not obliged to do the law. Or better still, yeah, to obey the law. The way the New Testament explained it further, he said that when you fulfill the, uh, the, the law of love, when you love your neighbor as yourself, when you love the Lord your God, he said you have done the entire law, which was about 613, all right? So that's why you see Jesus would say something that a new commandment I give unto you. Have you seen Jesus say that statement before? Jesus said, he said, a new commandment I give unto you. Why would he, if there is a new commandment, then there was this old one. He said, a new commandment I give unto you. And when, when it is a new commandment, he said, to love God and to love your neighbors as yourself. Praise God. So the love, that's why we are saying, that's why I've been saying this every time, that the love walk, amen, everybody, your love walk is, is the New Testament way of living. How do you know somebody is growing up spiritually? You look at the love walk. You know, this concept that people say, well, you know, um, you know, giving to the poor is different. I mean, you know, when you give to the poor, you give to the poor. Giving to, you know, giving tithes and offering and everything. When you give to the poor, you, when you love, you give to the poor, you are giving to the Lord. It's the same. Amen. It's the same. The Bible said, the Bible said, I give to the poor. Give to the Lord. It's in the scriptures. But that's just by the way. I'm just saying, your love walk, are we together, everybody, is an indicator of your spiritual growth. It is not the depth of your tongue, Tongue is good. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? I'm not saying it's not good. But your love work, how much you love your neighbor as yourself. How much do you, use, I mean, what you do, you know, for if those are sick, how much do you, so Jesus said something, he said, he said, when I was sick, when he said, you know, uh, he said he would tell those that are by the left, he said, you know, cast them out, you know, into darkness. He said, because I was sick, you did not visit me, I was hungry, you did not do this, you did not give me food, I was naked, you, did, you never clothed me. He said, when did we see you? Naked. When did we see you this? When did we see you that? He said, because he said, as long as you have done it to any of these little ones, that you have done it unto me. Are you going to try to say here? Yeah? Your love work is an indication of what? Your spiritual growth. Don't miss that. No matter how, no matter how you see it, let somebody talk in tongues from now to eternity is good. You will get the result of that tongue. Even if talking tongues for five minutes, you get the result of it. If you're talking tongues for one hour, you get the result of it. If you're talking tongues for ten hours, you get the result of it. But the indicator of spiritual growth is what? Your love work. Hallelujah. Very important. So, but, but we're looking at this out of the shadows. We look at this last week in Romans 5 first. Let's go to Romans 5 first. Uh, Romans 5, verse 20. It said, moreover, the law entered that offense may abound. 
And where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. We looked at that last week. That where sin abound, grace will do what? We much more abound. So the concept that where shall we continue in sin that grace may abound, you know, is a is a God forbid, yeah, isn't it? That the God forbid is not in the continue of the sin. The God forbid is in the fact that how shall we that are dead to sin live in it? In other words, it is a, it is a forbidden thing. It's not possible. How shall we that are dead to sin live in it? That's where the God forbid is. But this is it. Where there is sin, depth of sin. You know, that's why I keep telling people when they say, well, they look at they look on the internet, they say some people are Illuminati, that they have sold their soul to the devil, that they are irredeemable. It's a lie. Don't buy it. It's not possible. It's a big lie. Don't fall for it. Are you going to try to say, yeah? No matter, see, if somebody, if somebody comes to you and they say, well, they have sold their soul to the devil, grace did much more, is much more abound to save the person. I don't know, I don't know if my English is... I'm putting it out well. Okay, are you following me, everybody? Yeah. If somebody comes down and says, "Well, Jesus is uh, Jesus is a bad Jesus, or Jesus is this, or I don't know," they have said if they have said all kinds of things to Jesus, cause Jesus, okay, grace did much. Grace is much more abound or available for that person, and that grace is there to redeem, to save the person, to bring him out. Am I communicating to us here? So where sin, the Bible says where sin abound, did you see that part? He said verse 21, he said that as sin, as okay, he said verse uh, 20, 20, he said, um, he said, but where sin abounded, what happened? Ex- exactly. So we went to, let's go now to chapter 6. He said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in it? No, you know that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized what? Into his death. Now, look, everybody. This is the emphasis of today's meeting. He said, do you not know? So, he's, he, he's addressing your knowledge. He said, do you not know that as many as are baptized into Jesus? Now, now look at everybody. And just to help us, when you see the word baptism, okay, in the Bible, it does not literally or necessarily mean water. You know, many of us are used to that. When you see baptism, say, are you baptized? Oh, no. No, baptism does not necessarily mean water. Anywhere, the word baptism is from the Greek word baptizo, which means immersion. That is just a synonym of immersion. Are we together, everybody? Baptism means what? Immersion. Now, when, so anywhere in the Bible, when the word baptism is used, okay, that the element is, you know, is written alongside with it. For example, the Bible will say, John the Baptist baptized with water. So the element of baptism, what they would immerse with, is always included in that line. So for example, Jesus would said, John the Baptist very really baptized water, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Are you what I'm trying to say here? So you see, the element is there. Now, in this context, it's different. He says, he said, no, you know that as many of you were baptized into Jesus. So the word there, just put immerse, okay? For as many of you were immersed into Jesus. You were, you were immersed into his death. So this is it, everybody look here. So the word baptism, just, just get your mind off the fact that, okay, maybe he's talking about water here. This is not water here. He's talking about there is an introduction. He said, as many of you have been introduced into Christ, Jesus. Remember the Bible says in Corinthians 5, 17. He said, if any man is in Christ, okay, that's the baptism there. He said, if any man is in Christ, he said, he's a new creator. Are you following me, everybody? He said, if any man is in Christ, Jesus, is in Christ, rather, he said, he's a new creature. He said, all things have passed away. He said, behold, all things have become new. So he's saying there again, he said, uh, for, he said, know you know that those that are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Just to help us a little bit. For example, remember the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, look, go there, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. Are you following everybody? We are looking at Out of the Shadows, part two, baptism into his body. First Corinthians and chapter 12. Amen. So look at verse 13. Let's start from verse 12. He said, for as the body is one 
and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is what? Christ. So look here, everybody. Christ is what? One body. Say this after me. Say Christ is one body. You have to follow. Christ is one body. So it says this, next verse, move to the next verse. It says, for by one spirit, you are baptized into what? Now, look at here, everybody. For by one spirit, you are, we are all immersed into one body. So how are we immersed into the body? By the Holy Ghost. And whether you are Jew or you are Gentile, whether you are bond or free, we have been all made to drink into one spirit. I have told us this. This is now the drinking into one spirit is the same thing as being baptized in the body. You are baptized with the spirit. Okay, let me tell you. I think I've told us this several times. See, I, I, you know, I went on a vacation recently, and I decided to swim for the first time. Amen. I'm literally swimming. So because I've always wanted to swim. So I baptize myself. Amen. You know, what I mean by baptize myself means that I immerse myself. So I told us it because this is simple English. Amen. So when you, when you immerse yourself, when you go inside the water and you come out of the water, the coming out is not baptism. We have, to, we have said that before, yeah? Coming out of the water is not baptism. Baptism is your immersion inside the water. So the baptism of water, you can only do it for a few seconds. In other words, you can only immerse yourself inside water and hold your breath for a few seconds. You cannot be baptized in water forever. At some point, you will come out of the baptism. Are you going to try to say? Because baptism simply means immersion. So you can only say, have you been baptized before? When somebody is talking about literal water, yeah, I was baptized. It's only one-time experience. And it's... Is a what we are doing when you baptize in water and a, you know a minister or a, or a, you know somebody baptized in water you know literal water, baptism of water is just a public identification of your inward conviction that oh Jesus died like this and rose again like this. I can try and say, but the real introduction are we together everybody into the body is done by the Spirit. He said by one Spirit you are baptized into one body into the body. Now the baptism of the Spirit is different. So the baptism of the Spirit that we did, we are baptized in by the Spirit. We are baptized into the Spirit. We, were not, we, we didn't come out of the Spirit. So the baptism of the Spirit, you can be baptized in the Spirit forever. You cannot come out. Are we together? Because you are immersed in the Spirit. It's supernatural. So as I am, for example, I went inside the water. I tried to stay inside the water for a few seconds. You know, for a few, you know, more than you know, more seconds. At a point, when I tried to breathe, what I entered my mouth. Amen. I didn't even know. Maybe I swallowed or I did not swallow. But if I had stayed longer, I know I was going to swallow. Water. Amen. So just imagine that's what happens to us. When you are baptized in the spirit, there's no way you'll be swallowing the spirit. You'll be drinking the spirit. So that's why the Bible said, don't be drunk with whatever in his essence, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's still because it, you are being filled because you are immersed in it. You are not going to go out. You are deeply immersed in it. But you are drunk. This one is not going to shock, uh, shock you or suffocate you. Because the intoxication of the spirit brings something different. It brings out love work. Are you going to try to say, yeah, it brings out love work, but you are there. He said, don't be drunk in wine when it's excess, but be if you the Holy Ghost. Look at it. He said, but by one spirit, look at it. We are all baptized in the one body, whether you are Jew or Gentile, whether you are born or free, and we have been all made to drink into one spirit. So it's, it's an exercise. That, so sometimes when you see some persons are praying in the Holy Ghost, they are praying in tongues, what they are doing again is that they are trying to drink more. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can even drink more. Hallelujah. You can drink more of the spirit by just worshiping. In your room, you're just worshiping. Haven't you felt it before that you are just worshiping and you begin to feel the power of the ghost moving around you? Haven't you felt it before? Yes. It's, it's also, so it's not only by talking in tongues alone that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You can get filled with the Holy Ghost by singing and worshiping. It's not out of line. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, don't be drunk with wine when it's excess. But be what? He said, be filled Holy Ghost, speaking to yourself in hymns, spiritual songs. So that's the recommendation in Ephesians for a person to be filled Holy Ghost by speaking to himself in hymns and spiritual songs. 
Amen. You know, sometimes you can even talk and don't get yourself with the Holy Ghost by just saying, Mama, yada, yada, baba. You're just singing without tune. You're just flowing in your room. How are you going to try to say yes? So we are in one body. So we have been baptized into one body. So let's go back to Romans. Romans 6 again. So that we just get that picture clearly. Romans 6. So Romans 6 verse 3. He said, Know you not that as many of us are web, as many of us as were baptized or immersed into Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, yeah. He said, look at it. He said, when you were immersed, look at it. Don't forget this. When you, when the Holy Ghost immersed, he said, by one spirit you have been immersed into the body. He said, no, you know that when you are immersed into the body, you are immersed into his death. See, look at it. Look, see. That, that, that's another, that's, some, that's something that is big. Like, in a literal sense. It says that the Holy Ghost immersed you into Jesus' death. Like, his death. Look at, so in other words, look at everybody. You have to imagine it in your mind. I remember I was preaching somewhere. The person, I mean, that was the one I was preaching then. The moment said, he said, why are you always preaching like you were there when it happened? Hey, Amen. Because the way I was describing it, I said, that night, he did like this. <laughs> that night, as in, that night, I told him, I said, I was there actually. If I even told, I said, you were there, man. But you just didn't remember. Or you have not known you not. How you going to try to say? Because the guy, the guy had to come, Paul had to remind them. He said, know you not. When you tell somebody, ah, don't you know? Remember when the Paul said something, Paul said, he said, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Know you not? You know who Paul was talking to? Paul was talking to somebody who just slept with his stepmother. The guy slept with his stepmother. And Paul was angry. He said, uh -uh. How, could, how could you use your body for this? No, you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So he come, he's bringing him to his consciousness. I was telling you, I was saying, if it is these are our days, that they will write like, you know, thank God. See, I have told us this several times, that God will not use some people. And it's not beef. See, it's not as if God is beefing. God, will, God there's, a, there's a certain person that God will never use. Why? Because you can cause problem. <laughs> I'm serious. You can cause problem. Let me, let me tell you, so honestly, honestly, between you and I, between you and I, see, <laughs> you know, sometimes I go to preach to Georgians, okay, and, and when they, they offer me vodka, I, I, I said, that, will you think? I said, uh, just a little, because, you know, uh, uh, you know, and you know that in Georgia, if you don't even take it, they see you as an enemy. Like how can you come to us and not take what we cherish the most? At that point, it's not the time the Lord said, see, yeah, my point is that, you know, we say, yeah, I would rather walk away. In other words, God will not use, if your conscience cannot carry it, God will not use it in that capacity. So God will not, could not send you. How you can try and say, yeah, but, but you know what? Me, I know because you are not, ah, thank you, God bless you. Bless you. Oh, yeah, come on, just, come on, just, come on, just. <laughs> And before you know it, we start talking about Jesus. Are you going to try to say, yeah? I am telling you, it's, it's like that. I'm not saying you start training yourself to drink uh, vodka. <laughs> it means God has not sent you. So God has not sent you. <laughs> Hallelujah. What was I saying before I went there, self? <laughs> Romans 6. <laughs> what? Yeah, it, it addresses their consciousness. He said, no, you're not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I was saying that if it was in our days, most of the regular and the mainstream preachers would have said, no, you know that your body was the temple of the Holy Ghost. Because in their consciousness, already think, ah, uh ah, -uh, ah, uh ah, -uh, the Holy Ghost can never be with you now. With all the things you have done. Look at that mother. <laughs> hey, no, you know that your body was the temple of the Holy Ghost, which was in you, that you were not your own. <laughs> Because the conclusion now is that uh -uh, this person has lost it. That, that would have been the conclusion. But Paul told the guy, he said, no, you're not. You know, if you read that scripture in isolation, you may think Paul is just talking randomly. He was addressing somebody. He said, no, you're not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because when your consciousness is addressed, you will carry yourself differently. You, if, you, if, you, if, you are, if you are the daughter of the president, there's a way you do. If you, are, if you are born in the family of the royal family, there's a way they dress self. Haven't you noticed? Royal people, they don't even show their nakedness in queen. 
They don't show you know, there's a way. They dress very elegant. You cannot see somebody in the royal family, in, you know, in uh, London, UK, dress with, you know, with, uh, I'm telling you, normally. Because normally you just have to, as they gave birth to a baby, they're already telling you that the baby's net worth is 10 billion pounds. Are you going to try to say, yeah? I'm not talking to give birth to a baby that the net worth of babies is even maybe 10 naira. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, they give birth to baby. Baby! Haven't you seen it before? Have, you've read the news. The net worth of the baby is 6 billion. So the baby is growing up with the consciousness of billion. <laughs> are you going to try to say, yeah? Walking up in palace, seeing the way they are greeting each other. They, there's, a way they, there's a way they will walk. My point is this. When your consciousness is addressed, the way you will walk, the way you behave will be different. That's why Paul addressed and No, you not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He also addressed them again here. The other one we read now. He said, no, you not. That when you were baptized into the body, you were baptized into his death. Because that will change something. Why? Because these guys were struggling with the law. The law of Moses. And I will bring us back to it again. I will bring us back to it. No, you not. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, no, you not. No, not. That you are baptized into his death. Let me tell you what that means again. It means that, so you remember the story of what happened on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. After three days, he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, by the Spirit of God. So the apostle is saying by revelational knowledge here yeah, that when Jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished and there was darkness across the land and he was carried and went to the grave, dead body, he's saying that you were there. He said, no, you know that you are inclusive, not, this is not that figurative, Re spiritually, supernatural wise, you were part of, of what happened on the cross. You were the one, you died. Look at it. So that's where we go there now. Look at, let's, let's, maybe we should complete this one first. He said, therefore, are we there? Romans 6, 3 to 4. He said, know you know that as many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we... Also, should walk in the means of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of resurrection. Know you know that your old man is crucified with Christ. I told you some years ago, while we were teaching, we said, your old man, what do you say? Oh, yeah. He said, ah, I caught a revelation. I said, yeah, really? He said, I caught a revelation. He said, um, he said, um, uh, he said uh, I don't know where the guy, he said, Paul's grandfather, you know, whatever, was the thief in the left. You know what I mean? By the right. I have right of Jesus. I said, ah. How? Oh. He said, Paul said, he said, my old man. You know, my old man was crucified with Christ. You know, I'm mean, literally, this is not the joke. I mean, literally. For real. You know, he said, my old man was crucified with Christ. But that's, well, of course, that's not what he meant. He was talking about the sinful flesh. Amen. I, I mean, sorry. It's like some people actually taught it here. No, yeah? Okay, no. All right. Okay. So look at it. So let's go to um, Ephesians. Amen. Quickly, Ephesians and chapter 2. So we just join it together again. Now, very important, don't forget, we're planted together with him. Somebody said together with him. Yeah. I can't hear you. said together with him. Yeah. So look at the Ephesians one. Look at it. He said, and you, as it quickened together, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. Wherein in time past you walk according to the cause of this walk, according to the prince of powers of hair, the spirit are now walking children children's obedient. Next verse. Among whom also we had a conversation in the past in the loss of the flesh, feeling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Next verse. We're reading, we're doing a long reading. Okay, let me read it myself so that I don't. All right, it's over. Okay. Yeah, it's up. But God, who is rich in mercy, are you following everybody? For his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we're dead in sins, as quick as, look at it. Are you there? He said, when, even when we're dead in sins, he has quickened us. The word quickened means to make alive. He has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. In other words, when Jesus too was quickened from the dead, we were also what? Together. So don't forget, he said we were baptized into his death. You were there together. When he was raised from the dead, what happened to? Together. Look at it. 
Verse 6. And has raised us what? Up together. If in your Christian experience, if you are not reckoning with the fact that I died together and I was raised together, you have not understood it. Look at it again. Let's continue. He said, and has raised us what? Up together. And made us to what? Sit together. Don't forget. Follow that. Follow this word. You see that they are in past tense. He didn't say he will be raising us together. He will sit together. Now he said he has raised us up together and he has made us sit together now. So now the believing one is seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Are you following everybody here? Now you have to, you will get what I'm trying to say earlier. Now he says this. He said, for by one spirit you are baptized into the body. The body of Christ is, we are talking about the total experience of Jesus in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So he says you have been baptized into this thing. So, and how? How? It is not by trying to think. I say, mm, I think I am baptized. I think I am baptized. He said, by the spirit. It is supernatural. So when you say, Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. What you are saying is that you are getting yourself baptized, introduced into the body of Christ. By the spirit. And by introduction into the body of Christ, you are being introduced into his death. You are introduced into his barrier. You are introduced into resurrection, including his ascension and his sitting. Are we together here? Yeah? So that's why, look here, let's go back now. So we now go, I think I'm rounding up by God's grace. Ah, so many things to say. Okay, no, I'm rounding up. Romans 7. Praise God. Hallelujah. Romans 7. Look at it. We're going to read from verse 1. So don't forget now. So yeah, look at everybody. So if you are, <laughs> amen. So if you are buried together with him and you are one with him and the Bible says if any man is in Christ, a new creation, it means you are in Christ. You wear Christ. You are in Christ. Christ is in you. So that in itself, that in itself tells you that you are one what? With Christ. Say I am one with Christ. I am one with Christ. See, may I tell you this? Okay, let me say this to you. Everybody, let me tell you this. Ordinary Cut your hand. Cha. Somebody cut their hand. No, let the, we should not even go far. Say, you went to the court. You say, I am married. You know, the Bible says this. It said, the, the woman shall leave his father and the mother. And shall, oh. Uh, yeah, both of them actually. <laughs> now, both, both actually. Both. Yeah, yeah, them, uh, in general. Amen. Yes, both actually. In Genesis. In Genesis, everybody look here. In Genesis, it says the man will leave his father and mother. In Psalm, I think Psalm 32 there about, or Psalm 42, it says the woman will leave his father and mother. So it's both of them too. So another, way, another place, Psalm says the uh, woman will leave. So it's still, either way, as they are leaving, they are joining together to become what? One. If I say one flesh, Flesh, yo, one flesh. And the Bible is saying that he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. Hmm. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying ordinary marriage. He say flesh. Ordinary, I use the word ordinary marriage. It's one flesh. What is making them one flesh? All kind of ceremonies around. Including signing documents and the marriage bed. He says they become what? One flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord in one spirit. But look at what we are now saying. We are now saying that supernaturally, the Holy Ghost has put you into the body, but is death, resurrection, and ascensions. That tells you that your oneness with God is strong. Hey, I, 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 this one, where you, you, you marry somebody from another parent and everything else from and you sign a document and we declare, we de- I mean, the Bible says you are one flesh. You use one flesh. God's version is deep. Are we together here? That your oneness with God, that's when God tells you that I hate divorce. Eh? The one that is saying he hates divorce. Because he didn't say I hate divorce. See, I told you, I told us this. Before. He said I hate the, the, exercise, the exercise of separation. God is not... A God is or not in the business of separating. That's why he's always saying, I will never cast you away. I love you. you that's why you see the, uh, it is the prodigal son that ran away. 
It is not, the prodigal son, before he even came, the father was already running. Are you going to say, because God cherished relationship. Okay? So let's not put that one aside. So, so know this, that you are one with what? Say, I'm one with Christ. I'm one with Christ. Say it again. Say, I'm one with Christ. I'm one with Christ. Your oneness with Christ is not because you are confessing, oh. It is covenant. See, let me say this. You know, you cannot just say, well, I want to divorce. Somebody was telling me, that, ah, marriage is, marriage is um, cheap. He said, divorce is expensive. Because you have to get divorce lawyer, you pay a lot of money. But last one aside, the one that we are one with Christ is by covenant. Imule, imule. You know, sometimes when you say it in Yoruba language, I don't know your language. What is covenant in your language? Oh, Armando. Thank you, Sid. You know it in your language now. You know, when you say it in your language, when you say it in your language, is 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 deeper, yeah. Is deeper in my language. It is imule, imule. You know imule. It's strong. Hallelujah. And it's not ordinary imule. Or not ordinary covenant. It is a blood covenant, rational by his spirit, signed by his spirit. It's not something I just say. Well, I just, he himself is the one that we told us. He's the one that is at the two ends of the covenant. He's the one who is dying for you. He's the one that represented you on the cross. He's the same person that is accepting the sacrifice, so to say. Yes, to two ends of the covenant. You know, normally, when two, two people, when people want to make covenant, it's two different people that will make covenant. But this one, he came to become us. Knowing that we don't have the capability to stand and establish a covenant with him. So he stayed at one end, and the other end is the one receiving the covenant. Are you trying to say, yeah? And at the end of it all, at the end of the exercise, he says the victory. You are the one, you are the beneficiary. <laughs> I am trying to say, you are the beneficiary. Are you, are you following everybody? Let's now read this. Let's read this. Romans chapter 7. Follow through. He said, Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as they live. Is that, is that not true? Yes, sir. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So he's using this as an example now. That in marriage, when until the husband is dead or any of them is dead, that the other party can probably marry. Now, so he's saying it by example. So if when her husband leaves, she be married to another she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she, be, she is free from that law. So, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Hey, wherefore, my brethren, you also have become what? Dead to the law by the body of Christ. Are you going to try to say yeah? So it's, 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 you should get it. So now, because of Jesus' death on the cross, he said you have become dead. Don't forget, you are baptized to his death. So in his death experience, you are dead to the law. So you are dead to the law. So that why? So that you can be married to another. You are dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another. Even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So we should go on and on. But this is the point that if a man now who is not born of God now returns to the law, he is committing adultery. Spiritual adultery. Are you trying to say? Oh, uh, we're not even going into the, pet, into the petty things. The petty things of, oh, thou shall not do this, thou shall not do this. Those are petty, petty things. We are saying this. This is it. Okay, if by extension, the law was not introduced to cure sin. The law was introduced to show man their inadequacies. Are you following everybody here? Look at it. That's in Romans. Romans chapter 3. That's in Romans chapter 3. Are you following everybody? Verse 19. He said, now, Romans 3, 19. He said, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them that are under the law. Why? That every mouth may be stopped and that the whole world may become guilty before God. That's the idea. It's not possible. The whole world will become guilty before God under the law. The idea of the law 
was introduced, it was, it was introduced. Why? This is it. The law was not the one that brought sin. The law of God is perfect. It's holy. The law is holy. The law, <clears throat> amen. Thou shalt not lie is good. The law is holy. That's what the Bible says. But the persons that they gave to law to were dead people. People that were spiritually dead. People that had sin now in their nature. So you are giving people that are dead the law of God. It was to reveal to men that, ah, you have been sinning all along. This is the sin you have been sinning all along. Are we together, everybody? They have been sinning. But he said, this is the sin you have been sinning all along. So, by showing more of men's sins, guilt increased. Offense increased. We are telling us, even while Moses was receiving the law, they were already sinning, they were already breaking the first one. Thou shalt not serve another God. Are you understand? As he was receiving it, they were breaking it downstairs. You get what I say? So it is a it is a thing. It is the law will always be broken. Are we together, everybody? I don't need to go into the nitty-gritty of okay, look at where you are now. How are you? Because if I told us, see, if you uh, that's actually cheap, but of course, it's in the law. In the law, as I'm dressed now, I'm a sinner. Why? Because I'm wearing two materials. Different materials. In the law, you don't wear clothes of different materials. You wear the way it's supposed to wear, Jalamia down. I, that's the way. He said, don't put materials, two materials on top of each other. It's a sin. And everybody shall say amen. And this is the point. If judgment comes upon you when you break one. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. We are not even talking about, see, let me even say this. The beard, beard, I will talk about it. The beard gangs, they are the real, they are the real, no, beard gangs are not sinners. We are the sinners. The ones that shave are the sinners. Because in the law, but, but Michael, you are a sinner. You, you, you know, you know it's, thank God. Yeah, he does not have. He does not have. Hey, Amen. Because, because in the law, in the law, you don't even cut it. Look at it. You know, we share, you know, normally now, on a normal thing now, on a normal day. On a, I don't want to go because, you know, I don't have time to start going to those scriptures. You can go there. Leviticus 15, Leviticus 16, Leviticus 17 to 19. It's all written there. In the law, it says you shall not shape the corners of your head. All this one that you, you know, you corner. And in our days, these are the past, these are the normal, regular, nice boy. No, good boy. Look at this, smart boy. Because we do beard gang now. Uh -huh. That's weird. But that's also supposed to be. The way the, um, the Georgian priest, the Orthodox priest, the way they do it, that's where it's supposed to be. They're supposed to maintain it. Why would you, beard, why would you cut your beard? You know, you know what he was saying? He said, he said, how beautiful, how pleasant it is for brethren to dare together in unity. He said, it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron to his beard. Because the beard is there. But if you don't have beard, where will it flow to? <laughs> you also try to say, yeah. <laughs> it don't flow anywhere. <laughs> Amen. I, it's in the scriptures. That is to tell you that beard is a, is a serious thing. And some, that's what I'm saying. It's so cheap. And somebody will say, well, you know, you don't wear trousers. You know, do I, do I, the only thing we are advocate that you should be decent. Amen. Be decent. There should be a level of decency. And that is the fact that, see, you are walking by now by the law of the spirit and by the law of love. What you will offend others and bring others down, you don't do it. So you are, in a way, you are judged by even a higher standard. It's just that you are not obliged to maybe have condemnation or guilt. The things that you are judged by higher standard. There are times when something, even if we, spaghetti, if you notice that spaghetti will cause other people to ordinary spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> if you know, are we together, everybody? So it's very important. But this is the summary of the whole matter. That we are not under the law. We are not. Let me read. Let's finish with Ephesians. Let's go back to Ephesians. We could read on and on. Oh my goodness. There is so much to read. Galatians. No, sorry. Um, Ephesians.
Now, we read earlier, it says this. Uh, let's read Galatians chapter 2 from verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works. Let any man should boast. See, let me say this to us before I, before I complete this. That is the reason why, for example, the one who has believed Jesus, because he's baptized into his death, his resurrection, there is no way, I repeat it, there's no way anyone who has believed the gospel will not experience resurrection in the last day. There's no way. Because you, we, are, we are part of that entire process. The, the one that we have not all experienced yet is that resurrection of the body which Jesus experienced. But it's a gift for all believers. All believers. Either the ones that were, that were killed in war or anything, on any, any, even the ones in accident, anyone. The ones that went to preach and they died. All believers, they were experiencing resurrection. And that's the joy we have. Are we together, everybody? Yeah. That's why he said we should not sorrow like those that have no hope. Hey, yeah, yeah. Ah, imagine there's no hope. Air fire. Forever. We are not even talking about your body. We are talking about your soul and spirit are burning 247. Amen. Or lack of fire. Amen. But the one who has believed the gospel, hey, yeah, yeah. There is no way. There is no way. There is no way. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. In fact, they will do it first. Hey, Amen. They will experience it first. We are the one to cut up with them, to cut up, to match up with them. Because they will be experiencing it first. I, you know why? Let me tell you, you know why it's, it's, un, it's understandable. Why? Because they are no more in the flesh. So, they, because now, the limitations you have, let me tell you something. The limitations you have is in your flesh. Your spirit is totally aware of your divine right. So, when somebody passed on, their spirit, they are, they are just spirit. So, they are seeing clearly the way they are supposed to see. So, wow. And the only thing they are itching to take is to take the body. But because the Bible says we shall not be found naked. Amen. Everyone that has died in Christ now, they are in heaven with the Father, but naked. Naked. By naked, I mean no body. They don't have a body. We have a body. So the, we have a body, but it's a, it's a frail body, weak body. And there's another person that has another body, and that's Jesus. Jesus has a glorified body. He's in heaven. All that spirit, other ones with him, they have no body. They are naked. So they are itching to have, to have the same body that Jesus has. And the only day, the day that they will have the body is the last day that Jesus will come. That all of us, the church, the universal church, we have the same body too, as Jesus has the body. I am trying to say here. And that's the hope of our salvation. When you say hope of salvation, that's what we are aiming for. When we say Jesus is coming back again, it is not about disappearance. It is about the new body. Because that's the narrative in people's head. That Jesus is coming back again. Hey, disappear. No, no, no. It's a very wrong narrative. It was never what the church knew. What the church, when they talk about the coming of Jesus Christ, they are thinking about their body will be changed. They are thinking about this weak body. Oh, one day, I want to take a new body. It is this body that, see, some of you want to fast. Where, where are you getting limitation from? Your body. It's your body. Before you know it, your body is doing it one time, one kind. It's your body. Some of you want to hold yourself. Say, yes, Lord. Ah, I shall not see any lady or any man. Unto you I give all the glory. I shall not, Lord. Hey! Before you know you, the body, and, this, and, 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 and the way God now did it for you, you are having cycle. Hormones are just colliding with Omo. The body just be doing anyhow. Are you, are you with me, everybody? It is the reality. It's not something that you, you say. It is what is happening in people's body. Amen. But he said, who shall change your vile body that he may be conformed unto his glorious body? Are you trying to say here? The vile body, lastly. Let's just do this way, lastly, and I'll close. Amen. Amen. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I'm reading verse 10. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Verse 11. Wherefore, remember, that you being, gentile, being in time past, 
Gentiles. Gentiles are those people that are not Israelite. So remember that in time past, you were Gentiles in the flesh. We were called on circumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh. So those that were circumcised were calling you uncircumcised. Remember that time. He said that, he said that at that time, you were without Christ. You were alien from the covenant of Israel and stranger from, the, stranger from the covenant of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, that forget, don't forget the body out of the shadows. In Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For it's our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. This middle wall of partition, next time we'll talk about it, the middle wall of partition is the law. He said, look at, let's keep reading, verse 15. How did he break the middle wall of partition? He said, Avun what? I can't hear you. Avun what? I can't hear you. Avun what? He abolished in his flesh. The word abolish, what does it mean? Any, any other version? He says, to cancel, to erase. Any other version? Setting aside. Another one again? What? Repute. Let me read. Um, dissolved. Another one said dissolved. Uh, where, where we have an abolish 15. I'm reading the amplified version. He said, Oh, this is not the other amplified version. Okay. I have another amplified version at home, the classic edition. He said, By abolishing in his own flesh the hostility caused by the law, which its commandment contained in ordinances. Which he satis satisfied so that in himself he might make the two nations, the Jews and the Gentiles, into one new man, thereby establishing peace. We are not under the law. We are out of the shadows. We are out of the shadows into a realm of worship. A realm of dedication to the spirit, to God himself, to the father of light, to the father of the spirit. To a realm where we are led by the Spirit. That's why it is essential that every believing one must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because we are led by the Spirit. So for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God are led by the Spirit. We are not led by the law. I was telling us in the Old Testament, when God spoke, those words found themselves written on stones. And Moses went and took those stones. But in the New Testament, when God spoke, those words found themselves in the tables of our heart. By the Spirit of God. So now we are. So you don't go outside. You don't do external code again. The code is inside you now. Hallelujah. Say, I'm born of God. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. Say, I am one with Christ. Say, I died with Him. Buried with Him. And I'm raised with Him. In the name of Jesus. Bow your heads and talk to God. Thank Him for the word. Thank you for the word you have received. Thank Him for the word you have received. Ask that your eyes of understanding be open more, be enlightened more, that you be established in this truth, in this revelational truth, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God.